Hey folks, so instead of constantly typing my opinion of, of these systems on the forums, I figured I'd make a video here with the actual UI visible. I think this would be uh, pretty useful for the devs to uh, incorporate into their uh, future revisions. Uh, this character here, I made a pure half-orc uh, uh, fighter. Uh, just so I can kind of provide some feedback on the Kenzai tree. I'm not going to talk much about Stalwart because I don't really have an interest in it, but perhaps I'll uh, provide a few few thoughts on it towards the end. And I uh, picked Half Fork because it is a very interesting tree, especially this upper tier 20% uh, damage to helpless opponents, but the innates are what really bother me because they don't really do anything. I mean, Orcish Fury is just not a good enhancement for several reasons. Uh, number one, it's not stacking with things like Rage or, or Primal Scream, because those are morale bonuses as well. Uh, if you can at least make the Orcish Fury bonus a different bonus, it would add a little bit to the appeal. But the other problem with it is that it's based on your, on your health. Uh, any ability based on your health is not really that good, in my opinion, because it's not practically useful. If you want to make these available, I suggest you incorporate these abilities into the tree itself and give us something a little more practically useful in the actual innate line. So if I begin spending the half-orc points, you guys require five points spent to advance to the next tier. So I am required to spend five points in this first row of enhancements. Well, the obvious thing that everybody's going to take is this weapon training here, which on its own costs two action points for just one to hit and damage. I don't think that's a very fair thing to do because one to hit and damage for two points just inherently sounds wrong. Either make this one point or increase the to hit and damage on that a bit just so it feels like it's worthwhile. The other thing I would take, really, is uh, just the will save. I don't really care too much about the Dragon Mark thing, personally, because I'm building a, a damage dealer. Uh, some people, I guess, would enjoy the flavor here of a, of a chest blesser, so they have other things to take here, but I don't. Uh, Sunder is not bad either, but generally, uh, feet restrictions don't allow people to take improved Sunder these days, at least in the groups I run with. Uh, I don't have improved Sunder. So the only thing left for me to take is really will save. That has practical use, so I'll just take that. So these are my five points spent. Two for one point of damage and to hit, and three points for uh, plus three will save. Now I can take an extra strength, which is, you know, it's nice. All right, let's take that. And I don't really think I'm going to go any further than that. I mean, this Orcish Fury is horrendous. And it, I cannot justify spending these extra points just to get another point of strength. It's just too expensive. Naturally, in this progression, I would take more damage. I would bump my boost a bit. I would max out the power attack line. Go up again, again, and take the tier 5 ability. So, all in all... The amount of points I spend in the half-orc racial tree is not bad. I mean, if I can get away with 22 action points in here, it's okay. The only suggestion I have is to maybe make these innates available in the tree and add some more damage dealing enhancements to the innate line that are that are worthwhile to take. It's just it's just not a fun tree really. I mean, okay, so I got the power attack, I got a couple of damage ranks and a, and a tier 5 ability, which is really nice. But that's it. I mean, this ability over here, Orcish Rage, yeah, it gives me plus 2 strength, but minus 20 PRR, that doesn't sound like a fair trade-off to me. You know, if, if you want to give me minus 20 PRR, then make this like a plus 6 strength, plus 4 strength, then maybe I'll consider taking it, but even then, as hard as stuff is hitting right now in Epic Elite Giant Hold and other Epic Elite quests, I just, I won't take this for just two strength. Um, as far as this ability goes, I don't 
care about glancing blow procs. Make those glancing blow damage and then you got something. Second of all, it's two action points per tier. Look at that. I just took an extra 6% chance for magical weapon effect and I went from 22 to 28 points spent. That, that, that's ridiculous. Lock bash, I don't really care about it. Dragon mark stuff, I don't really care too much about. So I'm going to cancel this. By the way, I think there should be a, an undo or a reset point spent button instead of closing the whole window out and then reopening it. So this is pretty much how I'm spending my points here. So 24 points spent in this tree. I'm not going to really take these sh that, that strength enhancement until I see what's going on here. Now the Kenzai tree. So this tree has just a lot of problems. <laughs> the biggest issue I have with it is this attack boost. I don't give a shit about attack boost. Never did, probably never will unless there are some major to hit AC changes. It's just not good. This battle meditation uh, ability is actually kind of nice, but it's not worth two points to reduce the meditation by two seconds per tier. Obviously, any Kenzai that starts this tree will take the first weapon group specialization, so I'm doing Axis here, for instance. I'll take the first innate, obviously. So now I need to spend three more points. Uh, in my case, I don't care about exotic weapon uh, mastery because, you know, I'm not using an exotic weapon. So the only other thing I have left to spend here, there's no other choice, is attack boost. And I have to take all three tiers because there's nothing else to spend points on. I mean, there could be something here that might be a little useful. Maybe that's where the extra action boost should go, that this tree is missing. That would be really nice. But I would still have to take at least one point of attack boost to work up this this uh, pathway here. Next, I guess I'll just take Spiritual Bond, because I have to. I don't really like this ability too much. I could just get it from Battle Meditation if, I, if I'm going to do that. But I have to take this because I have to progress toward uh, Power Surge, which is a nice ability, and the Capstone if I stay pure. So, I spend my five points on the bottom row. Now, naturally, I have to proceed up here. Now what do I do? Well, okay, Battle Meditation is nice. I'll take the first tier. That just cost me two points. Now, if I want to meditate for 4 seconds instead of for 6 seconds, I have to spend 2 whole action points just to reduce that by 2 seconds. These should be 1 action point tiers. Just, there's no other way around it. It has to be 1 action point per tier. It's way too expensive to spend 6 action points on this ability where I have other things to take that are more useful. I'm just not going to bump this any further unless I have points left over. I'll spend the extra 2 seconds meditating screw it. So, tactics I definitely want to take. Two action points per DC is outrageous, by the way, but... Oh well. That seems to be the trend in this entire tree. This is ridiculously expensive. Two action points per tactic. So if I want plus three to tactics, I spend six points. Whereas, say... In the Dreadnought tree, I spend three action points for six to tactics. So, once that's taken care of, I go further. Oh, I can't take that yet. So I just go up this tree. What did I take? Well, for some reason this is locked out. So I gotta spend... Uh... Okay, so there's one more. So this seems like it bugged out. It's not letting me spend points anywhere. Well. Alright, let's respend this then.
Alright, so here's my axes, attack boost, weapon meditation, tactics. First here. That's my third tier. Strike with no thought is not a bad ability, but it seems like when I finished this I had four double strike because of these four abilities. Um, it should really be six because it's just kind of neither here nor there if you give one extra percent double strike if it's onward from this enhancement. Just make it for every innate. I think that would be a little more uh, intuitive. But I don't really have a real super good reason for that, it's just it seems better if you just do it for every innate. Um, anyway, I'll proceed further with this line. And it goes up. Alright, at this point, I have to decide if my build is actually going to be centered with a main weapon. At this point, it seems like it's really not worth it, unless you have some really nice flavor build you want to do. This is way too expensive. You have to take this ability and this ability to take one with the blade, each of which requires an entire row of stuff to take. Personally, I'm not going up to take Deadly Strike, because look what this does. It uses an action boost to perform a melee attack that is considered a critical hit. Big deal. This is really weak. I don't care about an attack that makes me score a critical hit. I score critical hits all the time. On a Vorpal, 500 damage. Okay, I guess that's alright, but on a Vorpal, 5% of the time I use this ability, I'll get 500 damage. There's no way that this is worth it. Uh, Shattering Strike is actually a really nice ability, but as I've said on the forums, uh, it's just not good that it's only a Wisdom modifier. I cannot get a meaningful DC with this ability from a secondary stat, especially with the saves that Epic Elite Mobs have in Giant Hold and other quests like in, uh, in High Road. It's just not happening. So I'm not going to take this ability, and I'm not going to take Deadly Strike. It's just, these are not good. These are, these are wastes. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take this useless ability right here, which costs two points, by the way. This is my second most... This is the second most aggravating thing in this tree for me, because the first was attack boost. Second is this stupid critical accuracy enhancement that you guys are still making us take as you do on live right now. And two points per tier, this is adding insult to injury, really. Nobody has a problem confirming. Nobody has a problem confirming their, their critical hits. It's just, it's just not happening. Why are we being forced to spend this many points on an ability that is also required to go to something nicer, like a good death, which is, I thought, a pretty good ability? And then critical hit damage out of the entire tree, it's shoved right in here. So even, even my access to this ability here is gated by my access, by my uh, action point expenditure to this, you know, in this ability. It's just not good. This this is really hard to use. It's very there's there's really no choice for me. As I've illustrated earlier here, to spend five points on the bottom row, it's pretty much guaranteed that I have to spend attack boost and weapon spec. Read in the wind is not a good ability either. I mean, really, th th this is just. This is like neither here nor there. Plus three inside bonus to dodge for six seconds. Six seconds? I don't know. It's just not good. So, I didn't mean to take two points of uh, critical accuracy, so I'll exit this. So the half orc tree spends 24 points. Kenzai tree By the way, clicking axes every time is really annoying. Just once I do it once, just let it I already know which group of weapons I'm going in.
All right, Acetic Training is actually uh, kind of a nice addition to this line. I thought that these were pretty nifty uh, choices. It's a pretty uh, interesting uh, choice to make between uh, getting an extra dodge and reflex versus uh, fort save and hit points, but I'll probably go with the reflex and dodge. But it's two points per tier. Again, really expensive. This is just... It's just an action point waste, really. You know, for for one extra reflex and dodge, two points. Uh, this really should be a one point per tier ability. So I'm going to take one of these, one of these, and grab a, a good death. I thought a good death was an okay ability. Uh, an extra multiplier and 500 damage under 20. There is some control over this, unlike. Deadly Strike, there is no control over that 500 point Vorpal because it's on a Vorpal. So it can come, it may not. I have no control over that. Uh, the fact that it's a auto auto crit means nothing to me. I'm just not going to take it. Uh, especially if it's an extra thing to click out of all the things I already have to click. I'm just not going to use it. I'd rather use Momentum Swing, which already expands my critical threat range and plus it gives me more damage. But uh, a good death I can play with. And obviously I'll take Keen Edge. So, that's it. Then I have to take one cut, which by the way is a horrendous ability, because I can't use it alongside an action boost. It puts my boost on cooldown when I use one cut. So, what the hell's the point of me even using this at all? But, I have to take it. If I want to grab the capstone. Well, now if I want to grab the capstone, I have to spend 40 points. As you can tell, I don't really care about anything else. problem here now is that uh, this really uh, puts pure build at a disadvantage. Because if I was a splash build, I would be able to move on. But as a pure, I have to take the capstone because it's, it's a good ability. So to do that, I have to spend 5 points more in the tree, and then spend the extra points that this thing costs. So I'm not spending 40 points, I'm spending 42. So, now I have to decide what to spend 5 points on. So I guess I'll take uh, extra Meditate, which is 2 points. Get one more um, Dodge and Reflex. So I'm at 39. And this is the problem I had when I first started doing this again. Uh, every other ability here is 2 points. There's no 1 point ability here to spend to get me to 40. So, now this tree ends up costing 43 instead of 42. Because I have to take something to get to 40. So, i uh, bump that again. There's 41. Now I can take my capstone, so I'm 43. This leaves me with 13 points remaining. To spend elsewhere. So, any other tree I want to take, where it's also gated by 5 points to get to the second tier, and 10 points to get to the third tier, I can spend 10 points, get to a third tier, and then I have 3 action points left to spend something in that third tier. I can't even grab any innates anywhere else. I didn't grab any innates in my racial tree either. So, what I spent points on here was most of the racial tree, the entire PRE tree, well, not even the entire one, I mean I spent it on mostly on the left hand side here. Right hand side I find kind of useless. And then I have 13 points left to kind of dick around in another tree. Which is, you know, a little disappointing considering that if I didn't have such expensive wasteful enhancements, like attack boost, critical accuracy, I would be able to spend those points elsewhere better. So the main points I'm making here concern action point cost of useless abilities, an action point cost of abilities that are moderately useful but are not powerful enough to warrant their cost. Kanzai Tree especially, this attack boost needs to be put off to the side somewhere with no arrows connecting it to anything. Just leave it somewhere where a person can take it if they feel that their to hit is not high enough. But don't force it upon me if I feel that I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm not even going to hot bar this thing. Now, when you guys put haste boost back in, 
I'm almost positive it's going to be a tier 2 ability because it's like that in the Shadow Dancer line, and uh, not Shadow Dancer, um, one of the rope uh, PREs. And uh, that suggested that it'll be here as a tier 2 enhancement as well. So, in order to get the haste boost, I'm going to have to spend 5 points anyway. Now, we're also missing extra action boost. I hope that makes it into the tier 1 tree. So, if I can have action boost in the tier 1 tree, the weapon spec, that gives me my 5 points needed. But if you don't remove attack boost, that means I would actually have to spend 8 points here, because I'm going to want to get battle meditation. Or weapon meditation. So the problem here is that I have to work through a useless enhancement to get to something I want. And the problem here with critical accuracy is that I have to work through a useless enhancement, which is really expensive. It means six points for the entire thing here if I want to max out my crit damage. That's outrageous. This enhancement needs to be butchered and gotten rid of. Just nobody cares about confirmed critical hits. Nobody. I mean, if it was plus 10 critical hit confir confirmation for one action point, I wouldn't take it. It's just useless. Uh, Shattering Strike needs to be either Strength or Wisdom Mod for its attack. It has to be, because otherwise it has no practical value to a DPS Kenzai. I guess a Monk Splash Hand Wrap Wisdom-based user can use it, but that's it. It's a very niche ability to be included in an in a, in a, in a arrow pathway. Deadly Strike is not a good ability to be a tier 5. It's just not. I mean, this thing... I don't even know how to make this better. Uh, let, let me... Let me control when to do 500 points of damage, I guess, not just on a Vorpal. Make it do 500 extra damage that can be multiplied. Just let it add 500 damage to my hit before multipliers are uh, incorporated. That would make it a little more appealing. Well, I don't want to make this video too long. You get the gist of what I'm trying to say, so that's that.